All right, in our final lesson for chapter one, we're gonna learn how to divide um, with decimals. So having decimals in the dividend as well as the divisor. But before we begin, let's take a look at our essential question. Um, how do you divide whole numbers and decimals by decimals? So this is lesson 1.9 in your big book on page uh, 39. Find each quotient to discover a pattern. Four divided by two is two. 40 divided by 20, notice that they have the same number of zeros behind the in the dividend and, or I mean the divisor and the dividend. Same here, there weren't any zeros. These both have uh, one zero each. 40 divided by 20 is also two. 400 divided by 200 is two. So when you multiply both the dividend and the divisor by the same power of 10, the quotient, <clears throat> the quotient is the same. You can use this fact to help you divide decimals. All right. Tammy is training for a triathlon. In a triathlon, athletes compete in three events, swimming, cycling, and running. She cycled 66.5 miles in three and a half hours. If she cycled at a constant speed, how far did she cycle in one hour? So in order to discover that, we're gonna to have to divide 66.5 uh, by 3.5. So first we're gonna estimate using compatible numbers, which they gave us. 66 is pretty close to 60, and 3.5 is pretty close to three, um, which is fine. I would have gone with 66 divided by three, uh, only because they're also easily um, divisible. I'd end up with 22. Over here, I'd end up with 20. You can see that we're still in the ball. The, our final answer will be in the ballpark of 20. So either one is fine. It really doesn't matter as long as you're um, close. All right. <clears throat> Make the divisor a whole number. So we don't, we, with our divisor, we don't leave it in decimal form. So we make it a whole number by multiplying the divisor and the dividend by 10, by a factor of 10. That's why we did this little exercise up here. It, if you have the same number of zeros behind, it doesn't affect the outcome. Well, basically, we're going to um, multiply both the divisor and the dividend by 10 and get rid of that decimal in the divisor. Okay, so... 3.5 times 10 is 35. 66.5 times 10 is 665. So we move those over. So um, now we'll go ahead and do the division in our step two. So 35 goes into 66 just one time because 35 twice is 70 and that's too big. So we end up with 35. Five, uh, six take away five is one. Six take away three is three. Bring down the five. Okay, so 315, and this is 35. So 35 times 10 is 350, so that's too big. So let's go one smaller. We're gonna do a little margin work. Um, so we're gonna do 35 times nine to see if that will get us close to 315. So I'm gonna do a little margin work. Come over here, we have 45. Bring down the five, regroup the four. Here we have 27 plus four more would be, let's see, 31. Oh, look at that, it's perfect. It goes in evenly, so 315 and we uh, subtract and we end up with zero. So, um, how fast was she cycling? She was cycling 19 miles every hour that she was um, practicing training for her triathlon. 
Okay, so is our answer reasonable? Let's go back to what we had in the beginning. Is 19 our final answer? Pretty close to 20 or 22? Yes. So our answer is reasonable. That's why we do the um, estimating first. All right, let's take a look at the next page. Here we go. Uh, divide 17 and 25 hundredths by 5 and 75 hundredths. So uh, first we're going to make, I'm wondering why they don't have us do an estimate first. I'm going to do an estimate first. I am looking at this, I'm thinking this is pretty close to 18 and this is pretty close to 6. So I know that my final answer is going to be in the ballpark of 3. So I like to do a little estimate first. My dad taught me to do that when he was helping me with my math when I was a kid. And it makes a big difference in understanding what you're doing and knowing that your, your results are accurate. Make the divisor a whole number by multiplying the divisor and the dividend by... Now this time, we're going to multiply by 100 because we need to move the decimal twice. So we're going to multiply by 100 because this needs to come over one, two times. One, two times. If we multiplied by 10, it would only come over once. And that's not enough to get rid of the, the decimal in the divisor. So is 575. So 5 and 75 hundredths times 100 is 575. 17 and 25 hundredths times 100. And this has to be the same for both. Um, is 1,725. All right, so uh, we know our estimate is about three, so that's gonna help us get started because these are kind of big numbers, aren't they? <clears throat> okay, 575, let's try three just to get started to see if that's gonna work for us, times three. It does not go into one, it does not go into 17, it does not go into 172 even. It has to go all the way out to 1,725. So three times five is 15, regroup the one. Three times seven is 21, plus one more is 22, regroup the two. Three times five is 15, plus two is, oh, 17, look at that. They made it nice and even and easy for us. That's nice. Okay, so we have, and we subtract, and we get zero. So this time they want us to check our answer, so we're going to multiply. Uh, we're going to start with, let's see, 575.75, so 5 and 75 hundredths times 3, because that was our original number. Okay, times three, so this is 15, regroup the one, 21, 22, 17. There's two digits behind the decimal, one, two. So our decimal goes right there. All right, so 17 and 25 hundredths divided by five and 75 hundredths is in fact three. We proved that that was correct. All right, one more problem. Okay, so like I said up here, whatever you're multiplying the divisor by, you have to also multiply um, the dividend. Okay, so down here, we're gonna multiply by 100 again. So we're gonna multiply zero and 14 hundredths by 100 and get 14. Over here, we're going to multiply, let's see, 37 and 8 tenths, 37 and 8 tenths by 100. Even though we only, our brain thinks, oh, well, there's only one digit behind the decimal. Whatever we do to the divisor, we have to do to the dividend. So this will move, by multiplying by 100, it will move the decimal over to the right two times. Okay, and if it moves twice, there's an empty space there that we're gonna fill with a zero. 
So we end up with 3,700, whoops, 80. All right, so 14 goes into, it doesn't go into three, but it does go into 47. Oh, I didn't do a, a quick little estimate first. Um, so this is very small. 14 hundredths isn't even close to one. So I think my answer is gonna be, whew, that one's hard to estimate, isn't it? Because here I have almost 40, and here I have a 10th. So if I say 40 divided by 1 10th, that's gonna give me about 400 in my answer. Okay, so let's see. Here we go, we have 14, does not go into three, but it does go into 37, one, two times, two. Okay, so then we go, let's see, um, that would be 28, two times 14 is 28. So 17 take away eight is nine. Uh, then we bring down our eight. Okay, 14 goes into 98. Whew, I don't know how many times, a little more margin work. Um, I'm gonna try, let's try five first. Um, if we did count bys with 15s, we would go, cause 15 is pretty close to 14. 15, 30, 45, 60, 75. Oh, I wanna go even bigger, don't I? Um, 75, let's see, 90 is six times, let's try six. Okay, so I end up with 24, regroup the two. Six times one is six plus one, uh, two more is eight, that's 84. Oh, look at that, I can go all the way to seven. Seven would have been a, a kind of a reasonable guess because the, um, the product ends in an eight and seven times four is gonna give me a product that ends in eight. So seven times four is 28, regroup the two. Seven times one is seven, plus two more is 98. So that went in nice and um, clean. So now I uh, subtract, I end up with zero, but I have to bring down the zero. 14 goes into zero, zero times. All right. Um, so the answer is 37.8 divided by 14 is 270. Now let's go back to kind of my weird um, estimate to begin with. This was difficult um, to estimate because we're working with such a tiny, tiny number here, but it gave me an idea that I was going to be in the hundreds place at the very least. Um, and my outcome was pretty close to 300. So am I probably right? Yes, I probably am right. So um, the estimate did help. It wasn't as accurate as our previous ones, but it, it did give me a ballpark number to work with. Okay, let's take a look at our notes. All right, 1.9, divide with decimals. So make the divisor a whole number, so you're gonna get that decimal out. And the way that you do that is by multiplying by a factor of 10. So our problem is divide uh, 66 and 5 tenths by three and 5 tenths. First we estimate. Estimating gives us an idea of if we're in the ballpark, then we go ahead and divide. So we move the decimal in the divisor Move the decimal in the dividend. I should add to these notes and say the same number as we moved it in the divisor. Then put the decimal in the quotient. And in this case, um, there's nothing behind. So that's a zero. So the answer is 19. Okay, take a look at your notes in, um, in the PDF form.